first and foremost, for those of you who uh, want to have an idea of what we're talking about, there are different types of these magazines. There are, um, actually, let me bring that back a bit because then I can actually hopefully show you. So you have uh, the different types. You've got local directories. Now, the local directory types are normally the type that don't have content as such, but what they have got is all the adverts okay so this is this will be a directory type magazine all it's doing is advertising there's no community content in that at all and there are a number of these type of magazines that normally pop around in different communities um, you'll find that they're normally run by you know a family or a housewife who puts them together at home and then sends them off to the printer to be done and they're, they're designed to earn them a small living they're not normally a big concern in terms of a big publishing concern or anything like that okay um but you can get these in various different formats you can get them in in the nice color glossy format that this is you know with the staples and all that or they can come in very plain black and white as well so that's a, a community ad type directory or a local um business directory type then we have the um then we have the community magazines now the community magazines are more this type of thing these are the type of things that where they will actually have content they'll have some interesting stuff about the local area um and what they try to primarily do is balance out you know on one page they'll have some content and then some ads uh, and it's never never normally all just ads and all just contents um so this one as i said this is the se 20 magazine and that's exactly that kind of format you you have content and then you have some ads on the pages as well uh the net is a th this one here is like a combination of the two above okay it's a combination of a local directory and the community magazine in the sense that it is very heavy on the ads and very light on the content whereas this one is very heavy on the content and light on the ads so this one more about serving the community providing information um, you know talking about up and coming events and so on and so forth but then using adverts to actually pay for the production of this for the community this one is more heavy on the ads so it's more about earning some money from advertising for the magazine um, but providing a little bit of content to ensure that people actually do read it now i have to say that between the two of these in my view these are the better type of promotion to advertise in where there is a mix of content and advertising the uh, directory ones because they are purely directories they will do very well they'll do it you know you'll get a good result out of them but they're um, more likely to either be put in the recycling bin because people think well i don't need anything now and people don't hang on to stuff uh, unless they're instructed to that's why we do what we do with the leaflets uh, or they go into a bottom drawer or a hall drawer or something like that and they don't come out until the very time that the person needs it whereas these ones people tend to scan through them to read the articles and then they're more likely to pick up on and see your advert okay so that's those uh, types um after that we have our parish church type uh you know the school sorry not school the the, the church um or the parish type of magazine now those are normally you know content filled for the actual um people in the parish to get information about what's going on in the community what's going on in the church all of that type of thing and then they have a small amount of advertising which helps them to pay for the actual production of the booklet uh, they're normally a very cheaply pr produced affair as well you know normally just black and white uh, no staples all that kind of thing however they can be extremely effective and the reason that they're extremely extremely effective is because most people who read these part of the the parish or church community will associate you with their parish or church so they have this sense of trust so these can be very effective they're also normally very cheap as well you know uh, whereas something like uh something like that 
can cost you 90 to 100 pound a month or maybe even more something like this could probably cost you about 40 quid for the year for a whole year and you'll go out in each edition of it as well um because they're not trying to make money from the production of it all they are literally doing is covering their costs uh but don't underestimate the value that you can actually get from one of these type of of magazines uh the next type we have are the uh, schools or local groups so you've got things like obviously schools but then you've got things like the scouting organization in your local area uh the beavers the girl guides there's any number of different organizations there's key men there's walking clubs which produce their own little newsletter type magazines small community newsletter type magazines and again they like to have a contribution towards the cost of producing it and that's why they will take advertising in it um, so ones like these for the school now uh, this goes out uh, for the school this one was for a particular for a school fate but they have different events like every quarter they will have something going on you know they'll have like the summer fate they'll have the Easter parade they'll have uh, the, the Christmas uh, fancy dress they had numerous different little things where parents are invited along to the school to do whatever it is they're going to do. And they will have one of these that they hand out to the parents at the time that they arrive. And putting an ad in this again is, is literally dirt cheap. Um, now, believe it or not, um, I still contribute to this one. I still, and, and it's purely because my kids are in the school. Well, one of them now is, is left in the school and I still contribute to this one and they still put an ad in, <laughs> even though I am not, um, even though I am not trading at the moment, they still run the ad and that, they've had that ad now since I've been doing it many years ago. And I run the ad every, every time that they run the, uh, the magazine. And I, I think for the whole year, it costs something like 25, 27 quid or something like that. Uh, and they put the ad in just repetitive over and again. And of course, now I just pass the work on. But um, these are the kind of things that you do because it's good for the community. But also you will pick up some work from these type of, of ones. And that would be like, your, as I say, your fo football groups, your, your scouting groups, the schools uh, and those type of things. And sorry, I've already jumped ahead and said football clubs and, and, and scouts and things. That's where we look at the uh, things like club newsletters. It could be walking groups, could be the local chess club, anything like that, where they actually have a gathering of people and they have a little community magazine that goes out to their community um, on any kind of a regular basis, whether it's monthly, quarterly or, or annually. They are worth getting in. And it's, you know, again, it's pretty much all about repetition. Um, so, right. The next thing we need to look at is the advert itself couple of things you need to think about when we are looking at the advert. Um, sorry, did anybody pick up any ideas there in terms of the type of magazines to uh, promote in? Just let me have some comments or let me see some thumbs going up, thumbs, hearts, or smiley faces. Uh, I know at least one of you, I think it was Neil, who said you've got to look into and find out where uh, you can get these things. Guys, the easiest thing in the world here is uh, to, number one, have a look at what's going through your customers' doors. Um, and if it's not relevant, you know, if it's not really obvious to you, ask the question. You know, when you're in with some of your customers that you've got good rapport with or at least a good relationship of some description with, then ask the question, you know, do you have any community magazines that come through your letterbox? Now, they may say yes, and they may say that they just they just took them in the bin. That's fine. Don't base your judgment on what they say in terms of, yeah, we get it, but we took it in the bin because it, they, you know, what what one person likes, another person doesn't and, and so on and so forth. So just because they bin it doesn't mean that the remainder of your ideal customers actually bin it. OK, so but ask the question because you may uh, be in a property where, you know, that delivery just doesn't happen. But within your catchment area your customers are getting it. So have a look around, uh, ask your customers what's coming through their door in the, in the way of free newspapers, free magazines, that type of thing that are coming through the, uh, coming through the letterbox. Uh, then also go to Google and just search on Google for local community magazines and see what comes up for your postcode area. Um, you know, my, my, um, general consensus is, and I know Neil is saying he's having difficulties over in Belfast, 
But my general consensus is that any time I've done this with uh, our business builders and they've said to me, oh, there's not going around in our local area, when we've actually dug into it and we've done a search, we've actually discovered that there are um, and they just haven't been aware of it. So they're worth looking into. It's worth researching. It's worth finding out. So do ask a, a body of your customers, a number of your customers, what's coming through their letterbox. What is it that uh, in terms of community magazines, parish magazines and that type of thing that do they get? Uh, and then, you know, grab a copy of it off of them and approach the uh, the people who produce them. Uh, when you do approach the people who produce these community magazines, I, I have a bit of a rule of thumb here. And I've mentioned it on a couple of occasions before. And I say it is rule of thumb. And that is you should contact them in order to make a purchase. If they contact you, then I would normally say don't don't bite. Yeah. Uh, but if they contact you, do some research before you bite. Never, ever, ever um, buy into something on the phone straight away. There's a couple of things that you need to do. If if you contact them or if they contact you, what you need to do is ask for what we call a media pack. Don't agree to anything. Ask for a media pack. Now, all of these local community magazines will have a particular package that they send out to prospective customers called a media pack. I said I wasn't going to go into too much detail here. And here we go. We're going down that rabbit hole. Uh, they should all have a media pack that they put together. And in the media pack, it should show you the types and styles, shapes and places of ads that they have in their magazine. They should also provide you with a couple of copies of not just one, but a few copies of past magazines that they have produced. And they should also provide you with a price list for the various different types and sizes of uh, adverts such as a line ad, a quarter page ad, an eighth of a page ad, a half a page ad, a full page ad, spread, uh, two, two page spread and so on and so forth. So they should provide you with all of the pricing and everything. So before you agree to anything, don't do it on the phone, even if you call them. Don't do it. Definitely don't do it on the phone if they call you. Ask for the media pack, wait for the media pack to arrive, and then have a look at it and see what is uh, the, the structure. If you if you find it difficult to figure out whether you should or shouldn't go ahead at that stage, ask in the toolbox. Just ping me a message and we, we can have a look at the media pack together and see uh, what the value is. Uh, the other thing to look at for within the media pack is the distribution figures. And also, while you're doing that, consider the following. A lot of these magazines, a lot of these directories will fudge the figures. So believe it or not, if they have 20,000 of these magazines printed, they will tell you that their distribution is 20,000. Now, the truth of that is it's probably not distributed as 20,000. That 20,000 uh, could be left in shops to be picked up. That 20,000, you know, 5,000 of those could sit in their office while you know to hand out to people while the rest of it is being distributed that's one way that they fudge the figures so that they'll say because we have 20,000 produced we have uh we, we have a distribution of 20,000 not necessarily the case they will also uh fudge the figures in a way that uh where they can only have 20,000 produced let's say or, or whatever 10,000 produced let's say they, they produce 20,000 keep, keep with the 20,000 figure but they might then say that they have a distribution of 40,000 because what they're actually doing is they're looking at the potential eyes on and they base it on the idea that people will pass on their magazine and they'll use all kinds of industry uh, industry figures you know 1.7 or 2.4 people may possibly look at this uh, particular magazine uh, because we've given it to one person it might be viewed by 1.7 people so on and so forth so they can fudge figures in that way as well so here's the number to look for, and here's the number to ask for if it's not in the media pack. How many actual door drops do you do? Because that's the figure you want. You don't want them producing 10,000 and then stacking them up in bundles of 500 outside of shops or inside of shops and cafes. And that's great when they do that as well. 
but the figure that's important to you is the door drops how many actually go through people's letter boxes in the area okay uh, that's the number you're looking for um what else right okay as far as the advert is concerned one of the things that we uh hope that you will do is position it in the right place now the positioning that we're going to talk about is not something that james has just come up with and created this was actually uh carried out i can't remember who did the research i may mention it in the original videos that we've done uh, you can, as I said, watch the videos on the magazine advertising. Uh, but this was actually research that was carried out. And the research that was carried out was about eye movements and about how people actually uh, quickly read stuff. Now, we're not talking about sitting down and reading a novel or reading a biography or something. We're talking about when people are actually scanning these type of magazines or these type of, of directories when they're looking for something. And one of the things that they discovered was that many people will, uh, th the motion I'm doing at the moment, and you'll probably identify this yourself, that many people, when they're looking for something very quickly, will actually scan it like so. Now, I'm doing this very tight for the camera, and it may be a bigger arc like so, but they'll scan through the magazine like that. Now, when they're doing that, they actually miss out on a big chunk down this middle section here because of the way that they actually hold it. And some very interesting thing comes about is people actually look at or read these things in a Z shape. Is it a reverse C? A reverse Z. So they start normally on this side of the page and move across and then zigzag across the page and down. Don't ask me. I didn't create this. This was what they discovered. This is generally how people actually do this. So what they worked out was that for the best bang for your buck in any kind of publication like this, if you want to be spotted, if you want to be picked out, it, the best place to be was going to be in the top right-hand page on the top right-hand corner of the top right-hand page. Okay. Um, now, some further research was, was carried out, and obviously it was discovered that the earlier you appear in a publication, the better it is as well. So page three, five, seven, or nine is normally the golden golden area, era, area, okay? Three is often taken by the editor to actually do their, let's have a look and see how, how true that is in this one. Um, so normally they class the, the cover page as page one. You know, some people make a mistake and think that page one is the inside page here. It's not. Uh, page one is normally the front page. Page two, the inside front, and page three, this one here. So, yeah, so that one there on page three, the editor has taken for editorial type information from the editor uh, and what's going on in the magazine and stuff like that as well. Some uh, emergency phone numbers and that type of thing. So that's what that magazine's using page three for. Uh, this magazine is, right, okay. So this magazine allows adverts on page three, okay? So you'll find in some magazines, it, page three is taken for, by the editor, so you can't get it. So then you go five, seven, and nine. Some of the magazines, they will allow advertising on page three. If you can get it, grab it. Okay, so as I said, they discovered that the best place was going to be the top right-hand side. Uh, and then the second best best place or best way to have it is on the bottom of the page, on the bottom segment of the page. So those are the two areas where as the eye scans across, and I'm guessing it's because it lands on one and ends on the other. I don't, I, you know, the bottom line is I, I'm not going to question the science because I've tried it and it has worked for me time and time and time again. It, we, we got phenomenal response from our adverts. Uh, mine were typically and normally in the top right-hand corner, um, but that I have had on the, you know, towards the latter stages of the business, we experimented and we got very similar results from the ad that we place long ways across the bottom and this is this is still this shape is still a quarter page ad it's not a half page ad um and not a lot of magazines will actually promote the fact that you can do it this way but when you negotiate and it is so worth it is so worth negotiating with the uh with the magazine to um, get the position that you want, you know, to the extent that you need to be prepared to pull away and say, I'm not interested. Because when you go positioned, when you go armed with facts, 
because these people run these magazines, they know this shit, okay? But they don't advertise this shit, and they don't tell you where the best place is. Why? Because they have to sell all of their space. And if they tell people that the best space is, then other people are going to be looking for discounts on spaces and blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Or people will be going, well, I don't want that. I want this. And they create a headache for themselves. So when you go armed with the knowledge, when you go armed with the information that you know where the best position is, number one. Number two, you're going to use tracking numbers so you know what how many calls you're getting from an ad. So therefore, you're not you know, you're not up against any bullshit. People saying, Oh, but it could be working well for you, blah, blah. No, you'll know. You'll be able to go back to them and say, Look, in this position, this is the results I get. When you move me to this position, this is the results I get. I I prefer these results. So put me back in that position or I'm going to pull the ad. It is worth negotiating that. Okay absolutely worth negotiating the position the page of your advert and a lot of them will, will try and play hardball and say well we've got a waiting list and we can't do this and we can't do that but trust me if they want your business and they do and they want your money then they will uh put you where you want to be there is another way that you can do this and that is offer an incentive and say i'll pay a premium and trust me it would be worth paying that premium if you pay a little bit more because you know that that spot's going to work for you but if you pay a little bit more to secure that spot and make sure that every single month the magazine goes out, you're in that spot, then that is so worthwhile to pay the extra 10, 15, 20 pounds a month to have it in the place that you actually want it to be. Uh, so that is the position. Let me see. I thought I saw a question or two coming in there. So let me just have a quick look. Um, Ba, 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 ba. So George is saying, uh, I have a listing in my local network community church magazine. Great. Just in the business directory, not an ad, though. Right. Confused with that. If it's in the business directory, it's an ad. No? Uh, okay. Uh, did James mention his accountant coming on today, or have I made that up? Yes, Terry, you've made that up. My accountant is on on the 11th. I did say that my accountant is coming. He's he's on on the 11th. Uh, we'll talk about that when we come to talking about the Wake Up Wednesday. Um, but, yes, he's definitely on this month. But, no, it was never – it wasn't going to be today. Um, so you haven't you haven't made it up, but I think you've confused the dates. Uh, Jed says, I'm on page three permanently in my local magazine. Perfect. Excellent. How is that doing for you, Jed? What kind of results are you getting from that currently? Uh, Neil Bartram, how big an ad would you put in? Neil, the uh, proportions of the ad are normally decided by the, the, the magazine. Now, I mean, most of the magazines that I will promote or advertise in are this sort of size magazine, okay? Um, now, some of them are larger. There, there is one, and I don't have a copy of it around here, which is uh, the Gravesham, which is uh, very similar to, well, almost like sort of, four times that size it's like it's almost like a small broadsheet a small uh newspaper uh so the size will be dictated by the actual um the magazine itself but normally what you will get they're based on the page so regardless of how big the page is you'll normally have them broken down into an eighth of a page a quarter of a page a half a page a full page or a double page spread that's normally the breakdown of how these magazines do it now, what I have discovered, and I have experimented, I've experimented with eighth of a page, quarter page, half page, full page, so on and so forth. What I have discovered is that the quarter page works much better than the eighth of a page, okay? However, after that, there is no freaking difference. I have experimented with full page. I've experimented. The only thing I haven't done is a double page spread, but I've experimented with full page. I've experimented with half page and quarter page there is no difference between a half page and a quarter page or a full page and a quarter page so go for your quarter page because obviously better results because you're paying less when you when you book a full page you will pay a lot more for a full page and you'll probably get exactly the same results as you would get off of a quarter page so my advice to everybody is at least start with a quarter page run with a quarter page uh, let that happen for a while. See what kind of results you're getting off of it. If you think you can afford to and you're happy to, move up to a full page or a half page. Test it. But 
trust me, I think you'll end up going back to a quarter page because you'll find that the results don't increase or decrease by going up uh, to half or full page. Uh, leave let these let let an agents and estate agents take their full page ads and everything and, and pay that kind of money. But um, that's my advice. So you know, play around with it, experiment as I would always say, experiment with stuff uh, and see what works for you. But definitely, the positioning should be as we said. And I would start with a, a quarter page. The other thing is that you need to give these things at least three months to work. Now, we had that, I think, as a question on Monday. But you need to give these things at least three months to work. Because, again, it's, you know, people who are receiving these community magazines through their doors are, uh, they're seeing the ads month after month after month. And if they see you turn up on month one, you're fresh, you're new. They, they don't know you from Adam. It could be, you know, you could be flyby. You could be gone in the next couple of weeks. So, uh, you know, once it has time to bed in, then you'll start to see see the results. Now, some people will get results straight away, but I would suggest you give it three months. And after the three months, then you need to look at it and think, is it in the right position in the magazine, number one? Is the ad the right kind of ad? We'll have a look at uh, what I suggest in a moment. Is it the right kind of ad? Does it need tweaking? Does it need changing? And if and after you've tried tweaking, changing, and that, and it's still not responding, it's still not getting a the result, then pull it and put your money elsewhere. Okay? Don't waste money on stuff that does not work for you. But make sure you do everything you can to get it working first. Don't give up on it because it didn't work the first time around. Let's crack on. Right. After the positioning, next thing we need to look at is your headline in these community magazines. Now, many of you will know my feeling on this. I am a great believer in keeping it extremely simple and just letting the people know what it is you are and what you offer. I am not a fan of having business or company logos displayed all across the top of the, uh, all across the top of the advert. So in very simple terms, just tell them what it is you do or what it is you are. In this case, it's electrician. So um, I would just have a very bold headline that says electrician or your local electrician or reliable electrician, but something like that that gets their attention. Now, these are adverts that I have actually used. These are, these are copies of adverts that have actually been in circulation. And you will see on there, there's not one mention of a company logo there's not one site of a company logo there anywhere on the page also you'll find that although i do give the website i'm not giving an email address i'm not looking at social media i'm not doing anything else because the one result i want from this advert and this is what you've got to remember guys you want one result and that result is you want people to pick up the phone and talk to you my contention was if they picked up the phone, if they spoke to me, then I could convert that into a into a quote and then I could convert that quote into a job. OK, if they're scooting around on uh, Facebook or the web or they email you and they have to wait for a response and all of that kind of thing, it's very easy for them then to just flick on to the next person and go, because people get impatient and they'll go, right, he hasn't responded to my email yet, so I'll, I'll have a look and I'll get somebody else. If they pick up the phone and they call you, then you've got them on the phone. You can then deal with uh, how long you get them to wait. You know, I'll be around on Tuesday, I'll be around this afternoon, whatever it is that you're, however your planning allows for it. But the headline, as far as the headline is concerned, keep it extremely simple. Electrician, that's what I used to use. Local electrician I've used on occasions, reliable electrician I've used on occasions. So those are the the very simple headlines that I would use and stay clear of actually using your uh, your logo, particularly on the top of an ad. If you feel you need to use your logo and that people need to get familiar with your brand and all of that kind of stuff that people believe, it's not true, but they believe it. Uh, then put your logo at the bottom of the ad. Don't put it at the top, taking up valuable, valuable space. You want people's eyes to land on it straight away and go, yeah, electrician, I need an electrician, or no, I don't need an electrician, and off they go. If they need an electrician, that's what they want to see, electrician, not, you know, Jada Warner and Sons or whatever the, the branding is for the, uh, for the company. Um, right. After that, then you need to obviously uh, add your registrations. We do this to build 
uh, trust because, again, in a magazine or on a leaflet, they don't know you from Adam. However, if they can associate you with some trust marks, as in um, if they can associate you with the likes of the NIC or NAPIT, I would always say NIC, not because I am biased towards them, but purely from a marketing perspective. You talk to a householder and you say NIC, they're more likely to know what it is as opposed to NAPIT or any other awarding body. Um, so, you know, when they can register in their head, oh, I recognize that, that's trustworthy, I'll go with that. Uh, for me, I was also a member of the Medway Fair Trader Scheme, so I would have that on local community magazines uh, within the Medway towns, within the Medway area, because, again, these community trust schemes, people believe in them, people trust them. Uh, so if your local authority runs a, a, a fair trader scheme or a trust mark scheme, then jump on it. They, they normally cost between 80 and 100 pound a year to be involved in. Your local authority will come and ask you a few questions. Normally, if you're registered with something like the NIC, they will want to just check your registration and then they're happy because they know that with the NIC, you're supposed to have uh, all the insurance in place, the complaints procedure in place, and so on and so forth. So they're normally happy to go, oh, you're registered, great, we'll put you on our trust mark. Uh, otherwise, they're likely to send somebody around, sit in your office, ask you a couple of questions, and then uh, award you the scheme uh, logo, put it on your adverts. It helps to build trust, particularly in local communities. The, the wider schemes, the, the, the uh, actual registered trust mark one, the NIC, the electrical safety register, all of these things help as well. But don't use up your ad real estate getting it too busy with too many logos. Try and limit it to two or three at least. Obviously, if it's a bigger ad and you've got loads of space, great, go ahead and do it. Um, so that's your registrations. Next thing you need to look at then is a call to action. And this is an area where some people uh, miss out on. And I know we had an incident in the toolbox recently where I uh, contacted one of the guys who posted these adverts just to let them know that you know a call to action does not mean just dropping in a phone number. Of course, you need to make sure you have a phone number. And by the way, make sure you're using tracking numbers on your adverts as well so that uh, you can gauge which ads are getting you the best bang for your buck, which magazines are getting you the best bang for your buck. But as far as the call to action is concerned, make sure you have something on there like call James now or whoever's going to answer the phone. Um, it's a clear instruction. Too, too many people, and you'll see this with other people's adverts, they simply just put the phone number on it. And, and that's, you know, that's fine. I'd rather have the phone number than not have the phone number. But there is a psychological difference between putting the phone number on its own on there and putting the words, call James now. You know, the call James now, it's an instruction number one. It, it's, it tells people it's okay to call me. You know, you don't have to wait. I'm waiting for your call. Because some people will be like, oh, I'll wait, I'll do it later. It's too early in the morning. It's too late in the day. He might be out at work. He might be doing this. Now, you don't want to go through that whole dis debate discussion. From a psychological point of view, the words, call James now, suggest I'm available for a call. So they're more likely to pick up the phone and make that call. Now, will I answer the phone? Normally, no. It would have been one of the girls in the office or, or a VA that would answer the phone. But it doesn't matter. They, they, they call James. They say, can I speak to James? They say, no, he's out on site at the moment. Can I take a message? I can help, blah, 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 job done. But the instruction to call James now makes it easy for them to make the call now rather than say, oh, I'll wait until the afternoon. He's probably out at work. He's, it's probably too early. He's probably down the hotel. Whatever it is that goes through their head, it gets rid of that and makes it psychologically easier for them to make that call now because they've been given the instruction call to action. The other reason that we put the, the name in there is for the personality side of it. It is It makes it a lot softer for them to actually understand that there's a human being at the end of this. Um, and by adding your name, it just makes it that little bit more personal. When they feel that they can pick up the phone and say, can I speak to James, please? Uh, it's a lot better than, can I speak to somebody about my electrics? Okay. So a couple of different reasons why we do it that way, but make sure you add a call to action to the advert. Okay, cool. Are we still learning stuff, guys? Let me see some thumbs, hearts, and smiley faces. Um, are there any other comments or queries at this moment in time? Let me have a look. Uh, where did I get to? Uh, teamed up with. Uh, Kelly is out there. Good morning to you, Kelly. Nice to see you uh, joining us this morning. 
Uh, right, no other comments at this point in time. Okay, cool. Right, next thing you need to do is with these magazines. So you've got now the type of magazines you should be looking at. You've got how you should be researching to find these magazines. You've got the placement, where you should be placing the ads and what size ads you should actually be trialing. Uh, and you've got the type of advert that you should be using in terms of the layout, which you can see on screen there at the moment. Uh, there are templates for that inside the toolbox. You can get those and just change them, put your details on them and submit those. That's the other thing. Do not let the magazine run their advert. Again, you'll have these uh, these editors, for want of a better word, who will say to you, we'll design the ad for you. No, 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 you won't. Because the ad that you designed for me is fucking shit and it won't get my phone ringing. This ad, this very simple ad that you produce yourself, that you will copy and paste and change the details to work for you and your business, this very simple ad works without a doubt. It has been tried, tested by me, by other toolboxes. It works gangbusters, okay? So do not allow them to give you a really flowery, oh, we'll put your photograph on it and a picture of your van and we'll fade things into the background and we'll make it all fancy and we'll put your business logo on the top. Vanity advertising, guys, don't do it, okay? Don't let them handle your advert. You submit it. It's the one that you submit that they post in their magazine for you. The other thing to remember as well is uh, I have a list of things on there um and I, I can't remember if it's different for both lists but you know you've got extra lights extra sockets fuse board rewires new installations pad testing landlord home buyer inspections blah 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 reduce your list to the things that you just want to do okay reduce your list to the things that you want to do and i'm looking at that one that one's got to be a very early one because i did not want to do pad testing so but make sure that your um you know, don't try and be everything to everybody. Don't try and promote everything. People will query. They'll ask you anyway. You know, if you don't put consumer units on there uh, and somebody wants a consumer unit and they associate that with an electrician, they'll ask you anyway. But only list the things that you actually want to do. Um, good morning, Leela. Nice question. What did I miss? I'm not doing a recap. <laughs> if you want a recap, watch the replay. Request a copy of the video. But good morning. Nice of you to join us at this time. Uh, great to see you there. I'm glad to see how well your podcast is doing as well. There's the thing. Put a link for your podcast in here and let the guys uh, let the guys go and have a look for and subscribe to your uh, podcast. Lila launch launched her podcast and it is climbing up the uh, the podcast charts at the moment. So um, give it a click, guys. Give it a, a listen to and a uh, a like and and help it do that climb. So Lila, go ahead and do that. That's a, a free plug for you. Um, right, so these community magazines, next thing you need to consider, next thing you need to think about when doing these is will the editor of these magazines allow you to do an article, what we call an advertorial in their magazine? We'll call it an advertorial. Uh, to them, you'll talk to them about it as, a, uh, as an article. Now, if they will, some of them will try and charge for this, and that, that's fine. If they charge for it, that's okay because you will get a return on it. It just depends on what they charge for it and whether you're prepared to pay that. Some of them will be so willing to have new material for their magazine that they will bite your hands off. Now, one of the reasons why I've done this particular broadcast this morning about these magazines is because coming up to Christmas is one of the best times to get in there with an article for these magazines. Because at this time of the year, you will find that these editors are scraping around to find some good information to put out to their customers uh, about the Christmas season and all of that type of thing. And you can go prepared to them with an article for electrical safety around the Christmas time. Yeah, because people put Christmas lights on. They put lights in their gardens. They don't wire things up properly and all of that. So what you do, and, and there's a, there is an article ready and prepared inside the toolbox that you can take i'm not going to say copy and paste it so that everybody's the same read it synthesize it make it work for you and your business and your customers and then reproduce it and then send it in to these local community magazines in the article itself don't try and sell anything don't say how good you are and what the best services are and what you do and so on and so forth give advice 
give tips and advice on how to keep them and their family safe over the Christmas period. Don't even talk about, you know, booking or hiring an electrician. Obviously, your your closing line will be something along the lines of, if you don't feel confident or competent, then contact a uh, trustworthy electrician. Don't say contact me. Uh, you want to come across in this article as just being genuinely helpful as their local community electrician. All the things, all the things that people fail on over the Christmas period. Why are there RCDs tripping out? Well, because they've got outdoor extension leads running, sorry, indoor extension leads running outdoor uh, lighting and so on and so forth. You know, all of these little things that go wrong. How, you know, how how are they likely to get a shock? What's likely to catch on fire? There's a number of different things you can do. And I don't mean scaremonger. I mean, helping them before they start setting up all of their Christmas lighting, these are some things to take into consideration. And this is a, a really good time to get those articles into these magazines now. And they'll bite your hand off and often offer it to you for free because it's of service to the local community. Now, of course, at the bottom, you will have article written by Neil Bartram and your, your, your business name and your phone number. OK. And of course, for that month, you'll place an ad in that magazine. But, 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 but. Explain to the person who you are dealing with, the editor, for want of a better word, uh, that you want your advert in a completely different place to your uh, article. So wherever they're posting the article, don't have the advert underneath it or beside it, because that's just one bang for your buck. Have your advertisement further in in the magazine or uh, further forward in the magazine. Again, three, five, seven, or nine, if you can get it. Um, but you'll have your advert, and then you have your article completely separate. Two bags, two bags for your book, uh, and people will associate you. Again, we're going to be talking on Saturday about positioning. People associate you more as being an expert if you're seen to be writing articles for your local community magazine. Now, that's what you should be doing in the build up to build up to Christmas. Getting one of those published. How many of you are going to try that? Let me see some comments. How many of you are actually going to give that a shot? between now and Christmas and see if you can get into one of these community magazines with an editorial piece that is talking about electrical safety all around the Christmas period. Let's see some comments, guys. I want to know who's going to commit to trying that in the build-up to Christmas now. Come on, we've got 22 of you guys out there watching this at the moment. I want to see at least half of you committing to doing a, an editorial. You don't even have to do the work, guys. Look, the the advert, sorry, the advert, the editorial, the, the, the copy is already done for you. It's inside the toolbox. All you have to do is take that down, read it, and rewrite it to work on, in your favor. Or if you don't want to rewrite it in your favor, give it to somebody on Fiverr and say, look, I've got this. I want you to write me one that looks like this but isn't this, that kind of thing. Uh, Richard Bartley, you're heading off off to work. Good. Yeah, we are running a little bit late this morning. Uh, hopefully, you've had value out of it. Uh, Terry did one last month. Excellent. Love that. Doing one for Christmas. Good. Going to contact him today regarding electrical safety article. Excellent. Well done, Matthew. Um, cool. Kevin's doing it. Yes. Excellent. Okay, guys. Well done. Right. Very quickly, just before we wrap up, in doing that, also try and get yourself a regular slot. If you can build a relationship with this magazine owner when you submit an article to them, see if they have an availability for you to do a regular slot. Now, doing a regular slot doesn't necessarily mean writing an article all of the time, okay? What you can do is you can do uh, like three helpful tips for this month. You could do photographs of things that you've discovered and just a little warning bracket around it like this is what we discovered in one property watch out for this type of thing you could do a little segment on how to test your smoke alarm anything that you can turn into a help sheet which you should have a whole batch of help, help sheets they can produce in this community magazine so i think it's a good idea to negotiate with them that you get a regular feature now you might not get into every single month but if you've got a regular feature going in every quarter and one was, as I said, a Christmas article telling them all the safety things. And then following that, you just had like three tips or a you know photograph of something and you're advising them or how to set your smoke alarm, how to test your RCD, various different things. Little segments going out on a regular basis, again, all geared towards keeping your name on the tip of their tongue so that you become the go to guy in your local community um excellent stuff so neil says he hasn't got a local magazine 
but they have got a local paper. Yeah, double check all of that, mate. Check on all the parish ones and the, the ones that may be going out in the church or the community that you're not necessarily aware of. Double check on that as well. But yes, uh, look at the the uh, local uh, papers that go out as well, or the local free papers in some cases also. Uh, my, my experience with those is many of those can be quite expensive to advertise in. Um, but it's it's worth an experiment because different areas and different localities get different results. So it's always worth experimenting and bear in mind my rule of thumb, uh, give it three months. If you're not seeing the results in three months, pull the plug. Um, cool. Okay, guys, we are just coming to the end. Just before we do uh, a word of caution, remember that when you are actually advertising or promoting in these magazines, what you will find is that other advertisers troll these magazines. So you will get calls from other people who are produced. So you'll get, if you get out into one or two of these magazines, you'll find that all the other magazines will find you, okay? Like I said, don't buy on the call, look for the media pack. Always look for the media pack, and then you call them back to book anything if you're going to book it. Never agree to have it done on the on the call, and never agree for them to create artwork to show you, okay? Because there are some scams out there, and some of you will have already seen these scams. They'll call like from the blue light or whatever and say, we, we distribute 10,000 uh, magazines to the local police force, and we, we'd like to feature you in it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, are you interested? No, you're not. Okay, well, let us put together a let us put together a uh, a draft for you and see how that goes. We will we'll send you a copy of that draft. Are you okay with that? As soon as you say yes, they create the draft, but then they put that draft into the freaking magazine and say that you agreed to go in the magazine, and then they try charging you for it. I don't know if you've had uh, a a case like that. I've certainly been um, um, cut out that way. Some of the other toolboxes have been cut out that way as well. So don't ever agree to anything over the phone. Always, always, always ask for a media pack and always state, if I'm going to book this, I will call you back. Okay? Because what you don't want is your voice on a recording saying, yeah, go ahead. Uh, and then them coming back and saying you owe them X number of pounds because they have actually done this. So just be aware of that and know that you will get calls from other people wanting to advertise uh, because you've got your ad in a magazine. But do not, do not let that put you off. Okay. Mm -hmm.